So let's talk, what are some of the best plants right now for attracting pollinators? Because my garden has gone absolutely nuts, absolutely crazy with the amount of bees and butterflies to a level, well, I've always had a good amount of level in my garden, but I mean, it's, it's crazy how many I'm getting right now. So I'm gonna tell you what's really attracting them right now. All right, when it comes to butterflies, if you're a experienced butterfly gardener, then you know what this is. And if you don't, that's okay. This is Corky Stem Passion Vine. Hosts plant to multiple types of butterflies, but in every area of my yard, except for this one, I think just because it's next to my lanai, I can't even find this plant anymore because it has been completely destroyed and eaten down by Gulf fritillary caterpillars. Which is why I have an insane amount of Gulf fritillary cat not caterpillars, butterflies in my garden right now. Like literally at any time, you can usually see about six to seven active butterflies flying around, which is I think like a really decent amount for not a very big yard. And we have at points counted out in just one section, 20 caterpillars. And honestly, when it's coming to passion vines, they are picking quirky stem over anything else. And what's great about this is it can grow in semi-shade areas. It can kind of grow up in between things. It can grow as a ground cover, which is where they're hitting it a lot. And I highly recommend it. Get it, or you might even have it in your garden. You just don't even know it. Stop pulling it. That'd be a better thing. And you'll get a lot of Gulf fritillaries because right now, butterflies are looking for host plants. A lot of people are worried about flowers. Get yourself some host plants. They are on top of this plant and they have been for probably almost a month now. Next up, an absolute powerhouse. It's gonna be salt and pepper, Minothera nivea. This has been crazy. Every time the sun hits this and heats up this plant, it is just covered with bees and small butterflies. Typically, um, I'm seeing marine blues, might be some Cassius blues in here. And I'll also get white peacocks and Gulf fritillary butterflies. So as a nectar source, it did great going through the winter, but I mean, man, as the population of butterflies and bees has come back, this has been like their plant of choice. They hang out here all day as soon as it heats up and it's getting that full sun. I mean, can you just, can you even see how many? There's so many on here right now. They'll go away if I get too close, but honestly, they just, they love this plant. This is one of the best pollinator plants in the garden right now. Yep, period, period. Fast, there it is. One of the many types of skippers. Oh, that's not even the yellow one I thought. That's a different one. I wonder what type that is. Hmm. Well, it's doing good with skippers too. Skippers. Okay, next up, um, this little stick of a plant. This is swamp milkweed. This is <laughs> it's completely being destroyed by monarch caterpillars, which is amazing. It's exactly what we want. The monarchs are back in full force. We've had them throughout the winter because we are one of the overwintering locations in Florida for monarchs. But now that they're back in full force, and I literally just added the swamp milkweed maybe, I don't know, two, three weeks ago, and it sticks, which is great because now I have a ton of monarchs in the garden. So swamp milkweed, butterfly weed, get yourself some milkweed. It is time to add these to your garden. They are out in full force and ready to start munching them down so that you can get tons and tons of caterpillars. All right, there are two plants right here that the pollinators are fans of. One, we got our native black-eyed Susans right here looking gorgeous. Look at that yellow. It is so pretty and they are just like really coming in now. So I'm super excited and the pollinators have been liking them big time, but behind it, Someone had told me the bees would love it once it comes in, and that's my radishes. My radishes have gone to seed and are going to flower. And I will tell you, the bees have been really, really happy with my flowering radishes. So sometimes when a plant bolts and you think it's done, it's over, move on in the vegetable garden, maybe not. Maybe provide food for your pollinators instead. And in the land of ground covers, look at this, brown savory. They love these little flowers. This is a great one. I like this one too. It kind of deal, does really well with this nice six inch mat. It's been doing a really good job of covering, keeping weeds out. And the bees love it. I always see them over here and they don't mind me hanging out with them. <laughs> but I mean, it's a very pretty plant. Hmm. Yeah, it does have a, I read recently that it has like a nice, it could be a mint substitute. It could be added salads. It does have kind of a, yeah. Yeah, it does have a mint smell to it. It's very nice. 
back in full force. This ground cover has taken off and that is dune sunflower. Look at this. Ugh. Who needs one big sunflower? Just have like a whole ground mat of them. I love this plant. It's so cute. And the bees are loving it. They like it. Uh, the butterflies, I would say the Gulf fritillaries are fans, but they don't, aren't big fans of it when it's this low on the ground. They like it when it creeps up onto this bush right over here. And it has not done that yet, so they haven't been big fans of it. Also, I think they prefer a couple other plants better. Now, a favorite of monarchs and Gulf fritillaries, but especially monarchs, is tomatoes. I have yet to be able to explain this behavior, but the monarchs just like hanging out on tomato leaves. I don't think they're doing anything really from like, they may do a little bit of pollinating, but honestly, they just love hanging out on the leaves, which is why I think always having your butterfly pollinator gardens right near your vegetable garden, it's always a good thing. Don't make them travel. Don't make them work. Get it right near. Put them right by you. <laughs> now over here, beach mist flower. It's in a shady point of the day, so they're not hanging out as much, but they love this. Gulf fritillaries, bees, and monarchs, I will catch regularly on these flowers. I don't usually see any of my yellow butterflies hanging out over here as much, but beast, beast, beach mist flower is a big fan. And then some skippers and potentially some moths are hanging out on this one too. Well, it looks like I see some marine blue that just went over here. This next one, this is Joe Pie Weed. I have seen a lot of butterflies swooping and coming near it. So I think they're excited for once it starts blooming, but it hasn't quite bloomed yet. But this one I expect in the coming time, they're gonna be really psyched for when it blooms. I'm excited, excited when it blooms. So that one seems to be an up and coming just because they're doing a lot of swooping. Swooping, getting ready to go on. Privet Senna with all the big yellow butterflies back. This is of course their favorite. This is a host plant. We haven't quite gotten yellow flowers. We were having some, but with all the cold snaps, it's kind of looking a little sad on top. Down the bottom, we're getting some fresh green growth and I expect to start seeing some more caterpillars here. Though we might have already had some. I'm not sure if this is from caterpillars or from the cold fronts. Um, but we are getting a ton of the large, the cloudless sulfurs, orange bars. I've even seen, I think, a few dainty yellows. So another host plant. This one's gonna be really pretty in a month or two. Ah, uh, my shade loving host plant and of course a favorite on my zebra long wings. This is white passion flower, AKA Passiflora multiflora. I have a ton of zebra longwings. I haven't seen any in the front, but they've been really hanging out in the back. We can see we got some munching action already happening. And coming back, I've been getting tons of zebra longwings. They've been hanging out more in this section. Of course, they love the shadier corridors and they like to come follow along this way. Now, for those who are fans of the giant swallowtail, I have not seen them come back yet. I've seen, I think I saw a couple a month or two ago, but they have been quiet. Not a lot going on there. Now, one of the plants in the back here that everyone's enjoying is tropical sage. And for some reason, I somehow got a white one for free. Sometimes they change color. So here's tropical sage. It's looking great. This is a great nectar source and can actually be a nectar source for hummingbirds too. So it's a great win, 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 win plant. Oh, that looks like everybody's over there. Yep, I see my zebra long wings. They're all hanging out in the back over yonder. Now, sad to say, this was sold as a native Pineland Lantana, and it is not. This is definitely Lantana camera. But you can see, if you're able to get our native, this is doing so well. The zebra longlings are all over. I don't know if you can see, there's like one there, there's one over there. They're just all over it. Plus, we've got a little golf fritillary hanging out. But the zebra longlings really like this, and if you can find locations where you can get maybe half a day of sun, half a day of shade near these shady corridors. The zebra longwings are all about it. One of the butterflies that has been joining us is the white peacock. I don't see any today, but their host plant is all of that in front of you. That's frog fruit, great ground cover. And it is just coming into bloom now. So we've been seeing more and more of our white peacocks, but we're not right now. Probably because our monarchs and our gulf fritillaries are doing a very good job about bullying them out. Well, those are my top plants right now for attracting butterflies, bees, and pollinators. And if you want to learn more about butterfly gardening and hear more of my tips and thoughts and plants that'll attract them, check out this video right here. Or if you want to avoid some mistakes with your butterfly gardens, check out this video right here. Okay. I'll see you soon. Bye.